smooth like butter. What's going on YouTube? Levi at Old Iron Off-Road. Back out in the shop, we have a new episode series coming up. If you remember, we built this Dana 300 sometime back, and it is still setting where it was when we finished building it. What we have here, if you're not familiar with the video, is we built a full 32 spline Dana 300, four to one ratio that we are gonna put behind a 4L ADE with a full manual valve body. It's going behind a 4.3 liter TBI engine that is going to go in our personal rock crawler build. We've also got some parts from Chris at the 4x4 garage laying in the floor here. Now, I previously showed you in that same Dana 300 video, I showed you the rig that we're going to be building. Now, I also have laying in the floor, you can see that big honk -a chunk of tubing. So, what are we going to do for a front axle? Well, I'm going to show you. It's cold out here. I don't know what happened, but somebody turned on the AC. Keep your eyes off of this. Super secret ninja axle stash. So, that axle right shaw is a really odd width Dana 70 axle out of, I don't know what it's out of. I ended up with it. We're gonna build a Dana 70 front steer axle. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna base all the widths off of a Dana 60, kingpin Dana 60. We're gonna use reed C's, reed outer knuckles, kingpins. We're gonna use some sort of traction enhancement device such as a Detroit or the likes. I think we're gonna use 35 spline axle shafts. The inners should be the same as an inner Dana, Dana 60, so we're gonna use the new non-neck down shafts. We're gonna use a 35 spline outer axle shaft, and I think for sh joints, we're probably gonna use super joints or CTMs. So it should net us a pretty strong axle. Outer wise, it's not gonna be much stronger than a Dana 60 with all the appropriate upgrades, but we will have the beef of the gear set of the Dana 70. Again, why am I doing this? Because I'm dumb. And I want to build a front steer axle. So anyway, let's grab the tractor. Let's get this guy jockeyed around to the front. We're going to throw it on our table out front. And we're going to blow the tubes off of it. Smooth like butter. Oh yeah! That's gonna go to the ground, hopefully. Hopefully this is gonna go to the ground. If I can get out of the way quickly. Oh Levi, why does your back hurt? I don't know. So that's the monster we're working with. Looks very Ford Vanny is what I think it may be out of. Now we're only interested in this part. Like we don't care about any of the rest of it. So we're gonna drag some tools out here and we're gonna give it the old chopper -uni. So also while it's on my mind, I wanna take a second and I wanna give an update on my wife. And I also wanna say thank you to everyone that's been following along. I've had a ton of people actually reach out to me in regards to her and check on her and pray for her and just show her love. And I do appreciate that. Quick update, she's doing well. She has finished all her chemo and she actually just underwent a double mastectomy on Friday, this past Friday. She's in the house healing. Um, I've been with her, I stayed with her all weekend. She's actually pretty strong. She's able to get up and do kind of as she needs. Um, obviously I'm here, I have my phone handy. If she needs to call me, she can. Her mom and sister and all of them have been stopping by and checking on her. I think what I'm trying to do is make it sound like I'm not a scumbag for not being in there with her 24 seven. Um, definitely made sure she was good before I, before I left out to come out to the shop to get some, some head space. 
Um, but anyway, yeah, I appreciate everybody saying prayers. Uh, should we actually go back this coming Wednesday? They're going to do some tissue expanders, and then she has some radiation to undergo. But I definitely would appreciate it if everybody would continue to love on her and lift her up and keep her in her prayers. Keep her in your prayers. It really means a lot to me, and I do appreciate it. So, so sincerely, thank you from me and from her. One Dana 70 center section. So I went ahead and stripped the gears out of it off camera. Wasn't gonna bore you with that. Here's the main piece of our build. All cleaned out, happy. So it's cold and I'm going in. Tomorrow, we'll get the plug welds out of it. We'll get this thing in the shop. And then we're gonna see, measure the ID and actually figure out what we need to turn our tubing down to. We need about a 10 thousandths interference fit. I'm gonna walk you through the full assembly on this thing. We're not gonna press it together, hopefully. So the last thing we need to do before we compress the remainder of the tube out of the housing is we need to remove the plug welds. Now I've done a bunch of research and some people say an annular cutter, some people say a carbon arc gouge, some people say drill. I really don't think a drill bit would be too effective. Um, it tends to, weld beds tend to be pretty hard. I think what we're gonna attempt is the old fashioned plasma fire. And I'm actually just gonna go in around the spot weld and I'm actually gonna cut the two, the, the actual housing, just a shade over the width of the weld bed and hopefully that'll get it cleaned out. We'll see how it goes. Austin's had this on. Captain Tiny Head. We'll see what happens. Oh, Take a minute to fully pierce. Let's probably put a glove on. Yeah, I think that'll work. I can actually see the crack between the tube and the housing, so should be able to blast that out. Definitely sucks trying to get through it though. You're getting rained on by fire until you're all the way through the material. We only got uh, two, four, eight more to go. No, 16 more to go. Good times. Well, I'm not ready to admit defeat yet, but we had uh, 20 tons of force on that and it wasn't moving. Uh, I pecked on it with a hammer. I can see where the weld bed has completely fractured around the inside of the uh, old plug weld. So I'm not sure if I need more force or if I need to relief cut the axle tube or what the deal is. I definitely don't want to damage the housing, so I'm going to back up and punt and get some more information and then be back at it. So another day, another dollar. We're back out here today on this Dana 70 axle housing trying to get the tubes out of it. And I think I've decided that the easiest way to tackle this, first thing I've gone through and actually very carefully inspected each one of the plug welds to make sure that I can see that it has completely let go from the housing. And... The tube is just mild steel, it's nothing crazy. It is DOM, but it's not uh, anything hard. It's not hardened. So we've got some really good Milwaukee Sawzall blades. And I have taken and cut a relief through the edge of the axle tube. 
just into the tube, being really careful to stop at the edge of the housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, get it cut. It only took about 10 minutes to cut through that. It wasn't a big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and get that other side cut, get all the plug welds really perfectly inspected. We're gonna chuck this guy back in the press and uh, see if we can make it move. Well, I believe we got her did. My plug welds were free. I just think it would have taken a little more press for whatever reason if these axle tubes were rusted in good or not real sure. But we're moving. It was scaring me before we had this press loaded. This old Harbor Freight frame. The top of my press is bowed now. So it, uh, we had a load on her. So we've got the axle housing stripped down. We have our chunk of DOM tubing. Now this is three and a half inch half wall. The tube that we removed was three and a half, three eighths wall. So it was a little bit thinner. OD, or it was a little bit thinner wall than this, so this should provide for some serious beefy upgradedness. Two things that have to happen. We need to measure the ID of this. We need to machine this down to within a 5,000, I'm not sure exactly where I wanna go. I've spoken to a friend of mine, early in the rock bouncer scene, was pretty big on building the custom 14 bolt and custom big upgraded axle housings. Um, he even had a hand in building a lot of stuff for wide open design and the like. So I really trust his knowledge and his um, information as far as this stuff goes. From what he tells me, the interference fit, the press tolerance on the factory stuff is 2000s. So we're probably gonna go a little bit more. We're not gonna get carried away. When he built Ray stuff, he would go 10,000s. We're probably gonna go with the 5000s press fit and we're not gonna press the axle tube into the housing. We're gonna cut our tubes to length. We're gonna machine this down to 5 thousandths over the inside tolerance. We are going to heat this up to a certain temperature and we're gonna drop, we're gonna silicone the outside edge of the tubing and we're gonna drop this guy in the housing and it's gonna fall right in. When everything cools, it's gonna be perfectly straight. There's no need for an alignment bar. Now, another thing with this that we have to take into consideration is gonna be inner axle seal. So we are also gonna run, again, this axle is gonna be pretty much a Dana 70 axle. It's not gonna be anything crazy. We're gonna run 35 spline inner axle shafts, 35 spline outer axle shafts, and we're gonna run the standard inch and a half diameter seal, and we're gonna machine the inside of that tubing for this guy to knock right in there. Easy peasy, throw some reed knuckles on there, build it out just like it was a Dana 60. We've got a Dana 70 steer axle. Fingers crossed it goes that well. So the next step is to get this guy to the machine shop, take some measurements, and get the tubes in the housing, and go from there. So we're back out here in the shop, back on our Dana 70 front axle project. As you can see, we have our tubes machined to a 5 thousandths press fit, and you can see that we also have a step machined on the outside as well as our seal surface on the inside. We have our reed outer knuckles. <clears throat> I was gonna go with the super reeds, but decided that the standard reed stuff is gonna be plenty beefy for this axle. I've built this fixture, you can see, plated across the front of this, and this is for two things. One, it's gonna allow me to clamp this to the face of the table so that I have a, the tube facing vertical. This is actually gonna be pointing up in the air. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a weed burning propane torch and I'm gonna heat this up to roughly 500 degrees and that's gonna allow the metal to expand enough that my 5,000s press fit should just drop right in. And once the material cools and contracts, it should be super tight, shouldn't move. Now, the reed recommends the same process. That's literally how you install these guys. They're a 2,000s press fit, I think, and or two and a half thou, I think. Put these guys in the oven for at least an hour at 400 degrees, pull them out, pop them right on. And once they cool, they're locked in place. So, let's fire up the torch. Now I've also taken the time to really prep the inside of this axle housing. I mean, and not by prep, I don't mean remove material. I did deburr around the old plug welds and actually just took some light grit sandpaper, made sure there was no rust or anything that would cause um, any issues. Try to make everything as nice as possible so that she can just uh, slide right together. Yeah, all right.
extremely hot. Yeah, it is. Let's give it a go. Fingers crossed. That was slick. Yeah, son. Bravo. That went well. <laughs> Uh, so this guy is super warm, which is what you want. Don't get in a hurry about getting this thing to cool down. Definitely, definitely. I don't think I have to tell you if you're doing this. Don't force cool it. Don't splash water on it or anything crazy. But um, while there's still some heat in this housing, I'm gonna flip it over, try to get it jigged up, and we're gonna prepare to put the long side tube into the housing. And this thing's gonna be stupid heavy by the time I get the long side on it. I'm not sure if I'm man enough to handle it. That's us. Good Lord. I got real nervous. I didn't think we were going to get it. Whoo, boy. Why does my back hurt? I have no idea. I'm going to go drink some water and die now. Excuse me. So the wife's out of the house, and now it's time for cooking with Levi. Episode of Cooking with Levi, we're going to be preparing Reed Knuckles. Easily place them on a non grease cookie sheet. Easily because you have a glass top. Because you have a glass top stove and you don't want to break that, especially while the wife is gone or here. A little bit of salt. A little dab of olive oil. 400 degrees, bake at 400 for a minimum of one hour and then enjoy. All right, so we've got this axle house strapped down on our fab table. We have the pinion pointed up at a 10 degree pinion angle, which for us seems to work out perfect for 99% of the stuff that we build. We really don't try to go crazy with our lift height. So again, 10 degrees seems to work out. Now, one thing we did do is we went ahead and put a reference mark on the axle tube and we referenced both knuckles so that when we slide our knuckles on, that they're at a predetermined caster angle. Now, that's something that's very important. So the knuckles, when they go on, they have a two and a half thousandths interference fit. When we pull them out of the oven, they should be oversized enough where they just slip on. But you literally have just a few seconds to get them where you like them, and they're going to lock down super tight. So the reference mark is very, very critical. And also, too, you want to spend some time with a mic and some sandpaper or whatever. While they're at the machine shop, you could always have the machine shop true at the end of the tubes. But we have actually gone through and dressed these down to where they are just about dead nuts on three and a half 
inches exactly. When we checked them initially, they were actually a couple of thousandths over. We're to a point now where the knuckles have been in the oven long enough, we're gonna run in the house, we're gonna grab one of them, bring it out, slap it on, go get the other one, bring it out, slap it on. Hopefully it's gonna go that well. I have actually had one of these stick, and if it sticks halfway, you're beat. If you're lucky, you'll get it off. If not, you'll have to cut it off and start over, and that's actually what I had to do. Basically ruined $400, so fingers crossed that's not what happens today. Ooh, hot potato, 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 hot potato. Victory on one. If the other one goes that well, I'll be happy. But you can see, that's exactly how much time you have to get that on. It's pretty critical, so. I'd like to have got it on just a shade further, but I'm not gonna get greedy. And let's do the dance with the next one, and hopefully it goes as well. And that one's on. Woo! Yay! Man, it's burning me. And final numbers are 5.80 and 6.05. I'll take it. So while there's still some residual heat in these knuckles, we're gonna go ahead and get them welded up. And we will proceed as we do on all of our axle housings when we do like a cut and turn. We will do a root, do both sides, and then we'll go back and cap them. silicone out of there get those all welded up and then obviously finish out building the axle now for those of you that can remember some time back we built the four to one Dana 300 and I probably mentioned this at the first of the video but if this is where you skip to just make sure that you stay tuned for more uploads on this project this is actually for a rock crawler project that we were building for ourselves our own personal rig We've put together a Dana 300 4 to 1 transfer case as well. We've got some other parts kind of accumulated. You're going to want to make sure you catch that. I believe that's all we've got for this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications when new videos are uploaded. And as always, enjoy.